many. So I'm happy to have War present you the two key tools of our thousands year old guild. A stack of index cards and a new type of marker. Now, for most of you sitting out there, you, let me explain the importance of these things. They are not mere symbols. The index cards are used as betting slips for the attendance pool for every high holiday service. <laughs> Which, by the way, the rabbi has once, only once in nine years. <laughs> Sandy and I are tied four to four. The other major use is to write out totally mangled, unintelligible transliterations of Hebrew names for polar aliens. <laughs> We hope you will find these now by tools useful as you move forward in your career. <laughs> Next, I'd like to introduce a man who is always coming to my New York, Connecticut, Florida, South Car Caribbean, Paris of Fix. He's our own handyman. He's been very helpful to everybody. I'd like to introduce to George Almond. George, you got a lovely new haircut. Community. 
in the way we wanted it to be. And knowing that the goal that you set forward was that nobody would get left behind. And I firmly believe no one has got left behind. And that is to your testament. And I thank you and I wish you were well wherever you go. Next, I'd like to introduce someone who has done some acting with me already that I might show seven times. She's a budding actress among many other skills, Miss Kelwyn Berzer. I'm going to keep this really brief. Um, on the way over here, I said to my family, what can I possibly say to the rabbi? You know, there's, there's two words, thank you. And they're so, they're used so often, but I think tonight you're hearing the heartfelt thank you from everybody. Um, so, uh, Hiloon put together, with the help, the extreme help from Lisa Connolly, a parent, um, a book of memories and a book of teachings that the rabbi has done over the nine years. And now I know what I can say because I'm going to read just a few things that the kids have written. And I'm going to omit the author's name. You will always be in my heart. I will always remember you. You are amazing. And then somebody drew a little picture of Rabbi. <laughs> with, with her hair and her eyes and her kids. I, I just think that's great. Um, Another student wrote, Thank you, Rabbi G, for teaching me the prayers during the services. It was very interesting to learn the songs and the chants. And my favorite memory of Rabbi G is when she helped me make a pillowcase. Now I sleep on that pillow every night. That's, that's just cool. Um, thank you, Rabbi G, for teaching me and leading me through my bar, bar mitzvah. You helped me find the meaning in a semi-meaningless passage. <laughs> so our, but our rabbi did that, and that's just awesome. I am so grateful that I had you to guide me, and I am sad to see you go. And finally, I have one more. It was not easy to choose which ones to present tonight. I invite the congregants or, or anyone interested to, to look through the book as well. Um, this one stands out. Thank you, Rabbi G, for teaching me that I have a purpose in this community and I can make a difference in the world. That says it all. So on behalf of the parents, the education committee, and everyone, Like to introduce Andy Schatz, the chair of the Social Action Committee, who personally has taught me the value of the community. Thank you, Rabbi. <laughs> and, and actually, Robert, for many years, was involved with social action and now bring, bringing me back a whole new way of approaching social action. Um, so, uh, as you've already heard, Rachel is obviously very, very much into social action. She is all in. And uh, as part of, of preparing for this, uh, I, I didn't really write anything down, but as part of preparing for this, I, I, I learned about some of the activities that took place before I joined the synagogue some five years ago. Uh, and in the book that, that was put together, the memory book, we put some, some pictures. It includes, for example, the demonstration of Darfur. Uh, and it shows a uh, social action committee from nine years ago, a rabbi from nine years ago, and you still like this young um, But you've heard about her passion, you've heard about wisdom, uh, and those were very evident throughout the work. I'm privileged to stand here really on behalf of the many, many people throughout the synagogue. 
uh, with social action teams over the year. But one of the things I really want to call attention to, or two of the things, um, are first, your courage. Um, it, it's an area where uh, it's easy to do a lot of things, but it's very difficult to do some of the more most important things. And throughout the time that I've been for sure, uh, in talking about issues that are tough issues, issues that are tougher issues now than they were then, and they're still talking about it. issues about immigration, issues about the other, issue about our need to embrace everybody. Um, and if you think about it, uh, you know we we've had some um, some seminars and, and things you engaged long before it was popular in issues about the right of workers to have a living wage, uh, demonstrating it when he's uh, talking with the management. Those are important issues that just now have become you know, so accepted, but at the time, it involved a lot of courage. Courage by getting involved in some issues here at the synagogue, whether it's racial justice, whether it's uh, immigration reform, whether it's frankly the issue of the boycott of Israel and, and how we as Jews should be looking at that and should be participating or not participating. Um, and so the courage is just something that, that has been overwhelming for which I thank you. But there's something else that is really unique, which is the joy that you bring to social action. Um, uh, hope is something that's very common with social action, it has to be. Joy, unfortunately, is something which those of us, myself included, probably don't have enough of when we're doing this work. And I think it's whether it's your spiritual background and basis for it or whatever, you bring a real joy to this. Fuses everything you do, which is something that I hope we can learn from and continue to be inspired by. Uh, and Stephen mentioned earlier with the word grace. When I think of you, you know, I, I, that, that's what comes to mind. And you know, I've always been taught that this is sort of a more Christian concept. But I think that whether it's your, your wisdom, your courage, um, and uh, you know, your joy that, in, that informs and creates the grace, or is created by it. It's just something that's wonderful to see. And I know that in going out, as you will, into your next venture, and your spirituality and your courage and your joy, I hope will, will really um, you know, do, you know, cause great things. And we will be watching for them. And we want to thank you for what you've left us with, the ability to move forward, and hopefully be inspired by all these things. So thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce the Reverend Kathy Peters, the former minister of the United Church of Chester. know uh, the famous story of Raquel and I uh, meeting together at the wheat market. Um, we did that often, but meeting together in the wheat market and saying we really want to do uh, an interfaith trip uh, to Israel. And we talked about it and we dreamed about it. And before we left that day, we said, we're going to do this. And um, it was a life-changing moment for me. Um, and I thank you for um, the love that you have for Israel that you brought to all of us that went on that trip and your sheer joy of being there. Over the time that we've shared ministry uh, here in Chester, we have um, worked on sermons together, on services, we've done justice work together, I've brought my confirmation class here. Uh, so there's been many, 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 many moments. Uh, but Raquel, the most important thing is um, being a clergywoman, uh, being anyone in clergy in this ministry, can sometimes just be lonely. Um, we have um, a lot of work to do with people all of the time, in our, but we need to keep our boundaries. And so having women colleague friends are a blessing, a joy, uh, a necessity, a lifesaver. And that is indeed um, what you uh, have been for me. 
and I thank you for your love and your laughter and your trust and your care and um, and I hope in your next ministry that you will um, find ways to continue to be my colleague friend and that you will find colleague friends women colleague friends especially through the rest of your life so blessings 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 to you Just excuse me for 30 seconds to bring character. I just want to speak uh, as Charles Savin and as many of us who have gone through life changing incidences and illnesses. And just a personal thing that thanks, and I think I can speak for a lot of us for both you and Kendra Belinda for letting us know it's okay not to know all the answers and why things happen and that we have to just continue to put one step in front of them. So I thank you for that.
Donald Trump is meeting me at Simon's. We're doing a one-on-one -on -one interview. We'll be on Nightline tonight on ABC at 11.30. So I'm going to turn this now over to Cantor Belinda. Thank you for having me. I hope you'll buy my book. And it's been a pleasure to be here for Book Staples and Rabbi Goldenberg's goodbye. Charles Sabin. <laughs> I know no one could tell it was you. But <laughs> that was Charles Sabin, everybody. <laughs> I do now want to introduce uh, Cantor Belinda.
just a cause. And I do want to think about folks like John and others who are physically not able to be here but would love to be here. And I'd like to do for just a moment before I perform it um, something that Rachel has done and we've done at other life cycle events, you know, particularly for our business students. And we're up there in the art and say, take a pause, take a moment, look around this room. We will never, ever be gathered together exactly this way. I mean, we've been together for like, actually a hundred, over a hundred years. Think about all the people, all the events, all the relationships that have taken place over these hundred years. People who we have loved and lost, people who came through here. So we're going to take a pause and really just look around the room.